I'm excited to share these live episodes with you from the 2024 NADA show in Las Vegas. I'm on the Lot Link stage interviewing our industry leaders out there who have been so gracious to share the stage with me. We're doing live recordings. They're sharing strategies to help our industry and our businesses level up. I hope you enjoy each and every one of these episodes. Listen and learn. Hey, it's Jen Suzuki, and I'm in the industry. I meet some of the greatest leaders out there, dealer execs, dealers, GMs, and I'm bringing them in the studio to talk to me about what's making their business pop, what's accelerating their growth. I'm sharing my own personal strategies for your sales team, so I'm ready to get after it. Are you? Hey, welcome back, listeners, to Dealer Talk with Jen Suzuki Podcast. I've got Dominic Scruggs here with me today, and I am excited to have him share some of his innovative strategies and target an area in the dealership that he has focused on that has helped his leadership uh, get ownership of one of the biggest problems in the dealership right now and to identify solutions and share those with us that have really helped uh, lead his team to crushing used cars. Tell me about some of the challenges that you are facing with used cars in your dealership. Sure. Well, thank you me number one and one of the biggest things that i've noticed with just not my store anybody right was acquisition you know everybody says hey we're struggling we don't have the volume the gross isn't there but they also don't have the units it's impossible to sell something that you don't have yeah. so how do you get it i think having a solid acquisition plan is the step number one okay. to succeeding in used cars okay so how do we do it well it depends on what your goal is you know, my goal is I want the cleanest car for the cheapest price. And for me, that's the service department. So I think having that service and sales that. set up, that's key. If you don't yes. have that, you might as well get out of the used car business because you're not going to find a cleaner car. Let's be honest. If we're going to the auction, we're buying somebody else's problem. There's a reason they don't want it. So uh -huh. why why do that? I want to acquire something with a story. If it's local, it's got a story. If it's coming back to this store, I can show that to the next and give them that story. And everybody loves a story. Story is what sells. Exactly. So and not only that too, but now you're, so you're targeting very specific cars that you know your market wants today. Absolutely. Right? So you don't have to hit up all the people that are coming into the service department. I could target the cars that I know are going to make me money today. These are good cars because they could come in through, either got service records. We know there, we know there's a backstory, but most importantly for me, not only just that, but for me, I always say you want to target that service appointment. You want to target that acquisition opportunity because now you have an opportunity to create a loyal customer, right? Absolutely. Like keep a customer, right? I want to sell them another car. I want to keep them our customer. But what better way to do that than to hit them? They already have an appointment. Bingo. I always say that to salespeople. Bingo. I'm like, I like the low-hanging fruit, okay? Let's go after the people who already have an appointment. Amen. <laughs> You know, the, the big thing that I look at is, number one, these folks know you. So they're going to give you an opportunity simply because you already have that relationship. But most importantly, they are driving a car that you know. Yeah. So why not? If you're going to if you're raising your hand at the auction, you're paying the most money. So you're not stealing a car. I've never understood why we will pay all the money at the sale, but we won't pay a customer that's sitting there that's going to trade the vehicle in, that's going to do another transaction. And most importantly, we start the cycle over again of keeping them in our ecosystem, which is huge. Yes. Yes. Okay. So acquisition is one of the biggest areas that dealers could target that you targeted. Um, I know there's challenges with that. And I know if you want to share some of those with you, you want to hit me with your number two. <laughs> Marketing. Yes. I think that's it. Marketing. You know, every used car is unique. Every used car has a buyer for it. But if you don't have the right eyeballs on it, you're never going to sell it. So I think, you know, especially pre uh, after pandemic here, we've got into, hey, you know, these cars are sitting. Why? There's a reason why every car is not selling. They see their A, price, B, visibility, or C, you just have not stretched out far enough to go find that market. So obviously we're here with lot links. One of the things I love with these guys is they find the buyer, but that's not something necessarily you just need this company to do. That's something that you need to look internally and say, hey, why is this, why are the doors not opening to this vehicle? Yeah. It's either my price, it's my marketing, it's the, um, it, the car's dirty, the wrong equipment. 
But those are things, even down to the descriptions on the cars, that a lot of dealers have really overlooked the last few years with uh, how easy it's been to move vehicles. But now that things are toughening up a little bit, those are some of the processes you got to really dig into and find out, hey, where's my pain point? Okay, okay. So in thinking about that marketing strategy, can you tell me some of the weaknesses that you identified that were holding you back from being able to move these cars, uh, to be able to, yeah, how, how, how did you leverage, what did you do in your marketing that got rid of these cars or helped you, you know, or some of these challenges you speak of? Well, the first thing is if you go on any third party listing and you look at the pictures, there's so many that look alike, right? They got the same angle or the same general picture. Do your pictures look like everybody else's pictures? If they do, well, it's no different than anything else. It's got to stand out, right? It's got to stand out. So, so you're, what did you do? What made you stand out? Well, number one, the first thing that I've done is banners. I made sure that it had banners with relevant information. You know, I want my picture to boom. The first thing they see is, hey, it's got something different. It, it separates and it's got a message. So if you've got um, a Care for Life program, if you have a lifetime warranty, why not let that be the first? stands out pops and say hey this is what separates my dealership from the next yeah uh next would be description okay. you know the same no, nobody cares if your vehicle has a, 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 a signal indicator on every vehicle in america has a signal but let's let's talk about why is this car special if you did get it at your service department say hey this is a vehicle my my dealership sold brand new uh we actually have done every single hit report on it we've got it and why not put in there hey we've done a thousand dollars worth of work in service on this vehicle we put brand new michelin tires you know what okay. makes my vehicle different than your competitor that is what's going to sell that vehicle and justify your price dropping the price is not the answer always actually going through and making sure that you are uh getting full value for your vehicle and you're selling that value that is typically what i see is key okay i don't see enough of this and so I'm wondering who does this job? Like, cause they, now they have to go back and they have to see the closed ticket and service and see what work we did. And I actually really like this because a lot of times that tells the story. And then going back to what you originally said, you're like, I'm going to acquire my cars, my used cars out of the service department, you know, because now you have a story. G did you ever put the story of the customer? Like this is a local car, you know, like we, these people have bought three cars. I mean, do you think we should put stuff like that in there? You have no choice if you really want to separate yourself, but you, uh, you hit the nail on the head when you ask who's the right person. I can tell you, it's not your used car manager. It's not the guy that's desking, you know, deals. Exactly. He can't do it. He doesn't have enough time. He's spread too thin. Yeah. You need to have, I, I've used a, what we call a velocity manager. I've used one the last few years. And typically these are just techie people that understand number one technology. They understand descriptive things. They know how to sell. And I want someone that can really sell the sizzle on that steak is what I'm looking for. So I typically get a, a single individual and their okay. only mission in life is to merchandise make sure the car is sellable yeah. from day one you know one thing we don't wait until three four days later once a car gets through service once it gets through detail i want my car ready to sell the very second i acquire the second it hits the internet it's got to be ready but it requires having someone that is there 24 7 almost doing that so you got to have somebody for that job particularly by now, you've probably heard the team at Lotlink say that over 70% of your inventory is not receiving marketing exposure. Whether you believe them or not, have you taken a look at your analytics to be sure? The Lotlink's VinView Optimizer is a free analytics tool that can give you a pricing, demand, and engagement analysis for every VIN on your lot. It's the most efficient way to ensure your inventory is getting the right attention for the right price. The best part is that the data is pulled straight from your own Google Analytics and store feed. There's no bias from any channel or marketing platform, including Lotlinks. So if you're interested in a transparent look at your inventory analytics, head to lotlinks.com forward slash VVO to get started with the free tool. And check out the Lot Links website in the show notes. Okay, tell me more about. Uh, you, you, so you're talking about merchandising these cars, and you're talking about descriptions, and really going more custom. Do you use ChatGPT to assist you with this project? 
Absolutely, because it's smarter than me. And it's smarter than anyone else that uh, that's, that's doing it for the most part. Now, should it all be chat GPT? No, no. you've got to like make some modifications to it. Absolutely, but it can help you tremendously. It's going to be able to tell you a whole lot more about the vehicle than most average. 99% of uh, the population will tell you. So I think anywhere that you can sprinkle in some AI, why not do it? But you still have got to personalize it. And again, to a certain extent, if you're the one typing that into the chat GPT, you are personalizing. So why not? It's an easy tool and it's there. It's free. Why not yeah, use right. it? <laughs> um, lastly, so one of the things that you've focused a lot of your attention on and that people always say to me all the time, too, is like, we need to get back to the basics. People need training. They need like a coach. They, we, we need to help our sales team. So look, you, you got the, everything's right in your inventory. You're attracting the customers. So you've got great descriptions. You're leveraging tech to help you get the right words to pop. You're set, banner, better pictures. You're doing this whole thing. You're using like lot links even to help you with your marketing strategy, with your pricing. You're really cent centered in on not marking down cars just to be marking down cars. You really dialed into this thing. Yet now when it lands, the opportunity, lands into our sales team's lap, what can we do to help them capture that customer's interest and actually sell what's on the description? Because a lot of times we don't teach the people enough to actually sell the, they just want to get them in the door, get them in the door. I'm like, what are you doing? Like in the eighties or something? Like people want information, you know? Okay, tell me some sales process techniques that you've instituted and how do you do this thing? Sure. Well, the training, again, it goes back to having a designated person. Again, I think if you're, you're waiting on your used car manager, the guy that's desk in 100, 150 deals a month to train, he doesn't have the time, the energy to, to do that. That's just not going to happen. So I want to put together a schedule with somebody particularly that is an expert on this particular item and say, hey, this is what you're going to train on. But you're exactly right. You know, if a customer shows up at your dealership today, in today's day and age, they're ready to buy. The only reason they don't buy is because we mess it up, if we're being honest. Right. So what happens? happens. A, they're going to say, well, this used car is great, but the price is too high. Well, the conversation is, well, Jen, if you're here, you, you well, tell me why you're here. It's got to be the right color, the right package, or right absolutely. You, you, you passed 35 dealerships to get to this one. You're, you're, you're here to buy. So having those word tracks and making sure the salesman understands exactly what to say, but not selling from a position of, uh, of scarcity, selling from a position of power. Yeah. If someone, I don't care where you're at, you know, to go 20 minutes up the road, you're going to pass 35 dealerships. If someone has done that to get to your store. Their intent is to buy. That is powerful. That salesperson should feel empowered enough to say, hey, you're here because I own something that most that somebody else does not. I've got the right color. I've got the right package. You're here because it is the right price. Why are we talking about this? Let me show you exactly why I can justify the reason that you're here. Let's go take a look at the interior. Let's talk about, let's go on the test drive. Let's talk about the value. Let's talk about the CPO or whatever it may be. Or what Those you are the did to this car to Absolutely. make it so special. Absolutely. I mean, because look, I can tell you a lot of people totally overlooked what you just said in point number two. Better photos, better description, you know, make, go back in the history, find some stuff, find a special story. And a lot of times the salespeople don't set it up to actually be able to drop that knowledge on the customer because we already know they don't like the price. We already know they're going to ask us about the price. They're going to want a discount. So you know what our job is? Bring the freaking value up on everything that we do. And if I got a special story about the special car, I better be saying, hey, did you know this about the special car? <laughs> you know, we, we put it through the shop. It's got new tires. It's got new brakes. You're not going to have to pay for any of that. We got a better warranty on this car than we do our, our, our new cars, right? Absolutely. I mean, you got to sell the sizzle. That's the thing. It always comes back to the sizzle. Right. Yes. Anything else you want to share with me today, my friend, that would help our listeners level up? Well, the big thing I would just say is continue to do what got you to the dance. You know, I think we've uh, got away from that from for the most part the last few years. And uh, we all knew that it was a, a pipe dream. So we're back in reality. So you yeah. got to get back to doing what got us here. And that's uh, that's blocking and tackling. It goes back to the basics, right? OK. All right. And I always say, you know, don't forget about those connections with people. It's yep. a kind of a lot of what you said today. Yeah. You know, whether it's connections with the car and the value of it or it's people or it's a coach. You know, it is the people business. That's what we're in. And, uh, you know, we until we uh, we can't sell any metal until we can, uh, build a relationship with somebody. It, you know, it's about one on one human being re reaction. So we got to deal with each other before we can sell that car. So, okay. amen.
Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank I appreciate you. it. If you like these episodes and my sales game techniques, you should snatch up our latest dealer education program I'm hosting. It's called Jen's Remote Classes, and it's a one-hour, once-a-week class with me alongside other dealerships all pursuing the same end game to achieve top 10% status in your dealership. For more info, hit me up. All my contact info is in the show notes. I want to hear from you. And follow Dealer Talk with Jen Suzuki right now to get notified when episodes like this one drop. This is Jen on the podcast Dealer Talk with Jen Suzuki. See ya.